hands. We've got Jesus on the inside, and we say, oh, what a change. prayer meetings with me. I mean, many of you, if you, well, there's quite a few of you. Well, let me just talk to you for a minute. Don't go anywhere. Uh, you know, one of the, the most important things about corporate prayer is that we pray corporately. I know that's deep and I'll give you a minute, but you know, the, what, what makes it different for us to come together and pray than just staying at home and praying? I remember one time when I was a little girl, I'd gone to a church uh, visited a church actually and I remember the Sunday school teacher in that class she actually started talking about people who pray in tongues and it wasn't a favorable remark but she made this comment she said I don't see how the Lord could understand anything with all those people just praying all that stuff out loud at the same time and I thought I, I, that, didn't, that didn't even make good sense to me I thought well, well you mean if everybody stays at home and prays out loud he understands it better than if we all come together and pray out loud I mean, that didn't even weigh out. And so there has to be a difference. Something has to be different about us coming together and praying that's different than when we just stay at the house and pray. Tony, don't quit. I like that. You're good. I, I like this guy. Don't you like this guy? I like what he does. So anyway, what is the difference? Well, the difference is the Bible tells us that there is an elevated degree of power when we come together, when we pray in agreement. When we pray in agreement. Now, to pray in agreement is more than just to uh, sort of have the same opinion as what's being prayed. That would be a good place to start. I mean, if we were all disagreeing about what was being prayed, well, we know that wouldn't work. But to pray in agreement, that's to pray in the same flow of the Holy Spirit. 
I tell you, the Bible talks about in Acts, it talks about that the people were of one, one mind, one heart, and one mouth. They were doing, they were saying, and they were thinking the same thing. Now, the Lord's blessed us by giving us music to work with and giving us musicians that, that thank God. I, I thank God for a musician that can understand and pick up on the flow of the Holy Spirit. And you know, not just any flow of the Holy Spirit, but the flow that the Spirit has assigned through the leadership of that service at that time. And that's how we get an agreement is we, we come together. We do together. We sing together. We pray together. We flow together. And we all get our eye focused in on the same thing. And we're of one mind, one heart, and one mouth. So, I, it, you know, this is a simple thing, but it's a very vital and important thing that when the singer is singing, and the singers are singing, and the music's going, it's not in agreement when everybody else is standing there looking at them. Now, this is a simple thing, but I'm telling you, it makes the difference between little bitty prayer and great big prayer. If you want God to move on something, then you've got to be moving with Him. And we have to learn to recognize the move of the Spirit. People want God to do things, but you have to learn to recognize Him. You don't tell Him what to do. You don't come in and define to Him how it's going to be, and it's going to be like this, and we're going to do it this way, and then we go home and we call it the Holy Ghost. No, He moves, and He moves through people, and you learn to recognize it, and you get in there with it right away. I mean, right away. And if we got foot stomping music going on, then you know what? Stomp your foot. If we got clapping music going on, then clap your hands. Get in with the flow of what the Spirit is doing. And say, well, isn't that natural? I don't know if you noticed or not, but you came in here tonight with your body. And so all of you, spirit, soul, and body, one heart, one mind, one mouth, all three parts, working with the Spirit of God, working together with what's happening on the platform. And it, it's, it's hard. You make it even harder when you come together and, and, and we don't get in that flow. But then when we start to pray, you expect something to happen. But, but then you have to work and work and work to find what the Lord has so graciously given us with a keyboard and some songs. And I like when we sing songs like this when they were just singing. I like that song because I can put my faith behind that. I got the Holy Ghost on the inside of me. Oh, what a change in my life. I got the Holy Ghost on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. And I can put my faith behind that even though I'm not here tonight. To My emphasis tonight is not for change for myself. Uh, even though every time you come in the presence of God, you can expect to go away different than you came. You ought to expect it. But I'm coming here to cooperate with Him for change in this nation that's going to affect my life, going to affect your life. And so I can put my faith behind that and I got the Holy Ghost on the inside. And bless God while I'm praying, I know He's working on the outside. Glory to God. What a change is happening. There's change happening. And so we start singing, and what we're doing is we're looking for a place. Music is so often the help to us, uh, but looking for a place, it's like, it's like that diving board. You're looking for that place to step out on. You're looking for that place that puts you out over the water. That, that, that place that you spring off from to put you out into that place where the Holy Spirit can take hold together with you and begin to make a change. But if you don't use that as a tool and you don't use that the way the Lord designed it and he, He's playing and singing and you're just watching and, and even thinking in your head, maybe that little song's going on in your head and you may be doing this. But the more you put in it, the more you yield to the Holy Spirit and what He's doing, whatever it is, whether it's praying or prophesying or, or, or singing, whatever, and you, you yield to that. By being active in it. You are not yielded unless you are actively participating. And when you do that, then it puts us into a place and a position to cooperate with Him and to move with Him. Are you with me? Are you with me? All right. Now, I don't want any lazy prayers tonight. We don't want to be, have to be here all night. We don't have to be here all night. We can come in and we get in and do business with the Holy Spirit. And we can make the changes that He needs for us to make tonight. 
Now, our nation is, uh, there's a lot going on. And, and over these next few weeks, as we come together to pray and in our congregation and on the broadcast, I'm telling you, don't miss any of the broadcasts. There are special broadcasts coming up in September with Brother Copeland and Oral Roberts. They are preempting uh, BVOV broadcasts in order to air these because of the vision that Brother, Copel uh, Brother Oral Roberts has had about this nation. And many of you may have seen it on Benny Hinn and, and already know somewhat about it. But there are some things we're going to be cooperating with the Holy Spirit and praying about. We're going to be in there with Him and not behind. We're, we're, we're not just going to be pick up the pieces prayers. We're going to be alongside with Him. But now to do that, you've got to come up. Come up. Okay? Is it twisting around? Okay. Praise the Lord. Let there be sound. Amen. But you heard me, didn't you? Yeah. All right. Now, I'm serious about this, and this takes an effort if you're not used to it. But we are going to be people. We are of faith. We're going to be strong in the Lord, and we're, we're going to work with Him. Bless the Lord. Amen. If you listen to me now, we'll come up. We'll come way up a notch. A notch? A notch. Okay, guys, take it away. Just one more time. Do whatever the Lord leads you. Don't have to do that same song. Just do it. Lord tells you to, Tony. We're going to tag a few songs together. None of these are difficult songs, so once you hear it one time, you just join in with us. Amen. I've got the life. in me. I've got his life, his nature, his ability. I've got the life of God in me. Come on, sing it again. I've got the life of God in me. Yes, I do.
of America. We thank you, Father, for giving us a homeland as believers, a place where we can root and grow and a, a foundation from which to preach the gospel all over the world. We're thanking you for it, Father. We thank you for a government. We thank you for a constitution. We thank you, Father, that you set this up to favor the gospel. And Lord, we lift this up to you tonight and believe that this time that we have together, that this time of prayer, that Lord, that it will be a service to your purpose, of service to your kingdom, of service to your plan, of service to your will, of service to your people, and Father, of service to the, to the purpose of the kingdom, that, that men should be saved. So, Lord, we yield ourselves to you tonight. We'll do whatever you tell us to do. We'll pray however you tell us to pray. And I believe that on the basis of the Word of God, that as we ask things of you according to your will, that you will hear us. And if we know that you hear us, then we know we have the petitions that, you ask of, that we ask of you. So I ask you, Holy Spirit, to stir within each of us. Help us, Father. We cannot be unified apart from you. We cannot be unified apart from the Holy Spirit. We cannot unify ourselves. We cannot come into agreement of our own will. But Father, yielded to you, you are the one who knits us together. You are the one who binds us together in love. You are the one who causes us to be joined together with unity of heart and purpose. And Lord, we yield to you and, and, and all of your will and purpose tonight. And pray and believe that our words will be your words. That our hearts will be knit together with your heart. And that, Lord, we will hold the thoughts, the intents, and the purposes of your heart as our own. And we say, Lord, that we have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. I thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Bless the Lord. Thank you, guys. Now, we're going to stay stirred up. This is not a, this is not a church service. This is not uh, a time where we come together and we sit and just listen to the Word. 
really you should be active when the preacher's preaching the same as when they're there to pray. You should be. In fact, if you don't know about that, then I preached about that a few weeks ago. Hallelujah. That we're here. We're, we're here to be actively participating. Now, I'm very excited to announce something to you tonight. I tell you the Lord is good and there is a call on this church. And it is, <laughs> I tell you the Lord just does good things for us uh, by doing things through us. And we are so divinely united to other churches who are also actively participating in the move of God and doing wonderful things. So I have two things to tell you tonight. First of all, let me tell you that uh, what's happening with us right now, that God has people where he wants them to be. We have someone from our congregation. He is a, a good friend and someone who's been with the ministry here for a number of years. I guess it goes back. He's probably been here Let's see, it would be 14 years, I believe, that he's been here with the ministry, and he's a, a rather smart fellow. And because of his smartness, praise the Lord, uh, he is working at the Republican National Convention. He's part of the tech crew there working for ABC, and uh, has clearance to be anywhere and everywhere he wants to be. And uh, so uh, he is a liaison. And we're thrilled about that. And because of that, he was helping. He gets to do pretty much what, you know, everyone wants to do. And he was working with a group today. And I'm so thrilled to announce to you that once again, the Eagle Mountain International Church Sunday morning service played in the Al Jazeera uh, production truck Hallelujah. this morning. So this is twice that has happened. So isn't that good? I mean, you got to check that internet feed. You might as well be checking it with the EMIC website as anything else, don't you think? Far more interesting than bars and tone, trust me. So praise the Lord. God is good about that. But but we're thrilled to announce to you that that uh, our, our man on the scene is already doing what God has led him to do. He did this at the Democratic Convention, and now he's doing it at the Republican Convention. And he's just walking around and praying over every state lectern, praying over every media booth, praying over the podiums, walking through, out praying in the Holy Ghost, anointing things with oil, doing whatever the Lord tells him to do, just in order to be a support. And, you know, we're not praying against anybody, praying for him. And we did that at the last convention. He went through, he wasn't praying against anybody, just praying for them. Prayed that the truth would be revealed, that things hidden would be revealed. And Now, some people would rather that not be the prayer that you pray. But, you know, it's always in your, in your best behalf for the truth to be revealed. And so he was just praying for them and we were praying for them and, and praying that what's in their heart would be what would be what would come out. Bless the Lord. And I believe that we're seeing that happen. And so he's there in the Republican convention and telling us some wonderful things, very interesting things that he was telling us. It's so exciting. But you know one of the things he said, he, when he called us from Boston, it was like pray. He said, I, I've never been in such a place with so much hatred. He said, it's just, it's just amazing. He said, wherever you go, it's just hate. He said, they don't even talk about their candidate. They just talk about who they hate. And what they want is said the level of fear and hatred and, and animosity towards one another and towards anything and everything. He said, it's just an amazing thing. It's vicious feeling and sense on the inside. Uh, but he said, it's a, a, the convention here hadn't even started good yet. And he said, the atmosphere is so peaceful. He said, it's so calm. He's talked to a few of the delegates already and talking to different ones. And he said, their agenda is to promote what they stand for and he said there's just not there's no talk about who they're against Good. there's no talk about that it's just what they're for hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. well we appreciate that yeah. and i said well can we tell about you being there is where when he was in boston it was like please don't say anything about me being here specifically i think it, it might be of concern but i said well is there do you have a security concern where you are now he said no no, no problem. Just feel free. Say whatever you want. He said, it's just not the same as it was a few weeks back. But rather, it's just the peace of God is just there. And he said, it's just a peaceful place. So what about all the demonstrators? He said, well, all the hatred's on the outside this time instead of on the inside. And uh, I've already arrested way more people at this one than they have at the other one. And he said, that's because all those people that are demonstrating on the outside were on the inside last time. So... <laughs> Um, 
anyway, uh, so that is, that's a good report. That's good to know that we, that the Lord, and I'm sure he's not the only one, but if he were, then our prayers together with him would be sufficient. But I know that he's not the only person they're praying. And so I told him that we would, of course, would pray over him. We're going to pray over the convention. Uh, he said that the security is wonderful, that the New York police have done a wonderful job. He's been talking to Secret Service and the work that they've done, and they have done an excellent job. He said it's pretty amazing what they do. Uh, this, in this arena, it's where the hockey players play. He said they raised the floor, the hockey floor. What did they say? He said, George, did they raise it nine feet? They raised the floor nine feet and built... built a whole structure underneath so that the platform now is up nine feet higher and all the the lot of the headquarters and things for what happens in the kit convention is now is underneath the platform so it's very interesting and and we're expecting some wonderful things one just a little bit in the know thing is that when the president gives his speech everything will undergo a massive conversion from uh, the way it'll look monday tuesday wednesday night It'll have one look Thursday night when the president comes. The entire thing will look different. So you're in the know. But then we are also connected with other churches that, are, that God is using strategically. Uh, you know, Living Word in Minneapolis, Mac and Lynn Hammond, who pastor there, right? And most of you know them, and we're very closely associated with them in prayer. Well, Sister Hammond met with the president. Oh, Hallelujah. Yeah. Was favored. There were four pastors chosen in Minneapolis. Uh, they made her leave Mac at home. He wasn't allowed to come. But uh, Lynn and three others were set up to shake hands with him and meet him briefly. And uh, long story short, he went straight to her. He went straight to her. So I think he briefly shook hands with those others and went straight to her. And she got to talk with him, told him what she'd been praying for him, gave him the verses that the Lord had had her praying over him. She said, I've been praying for you since 1996. Hallelujah. And he said, well, that's why I'm in office. And he was so gracious to her, very sweet and very kind. Uh, it was not like an office meeting. They were in a location, I guess, going to some sort of campaign speech uh, uh, occasion. Anyway, he just took a stroll, took a walk with Lynn, Aww. hallelujah, and let her talk to him and, and talk to him about destiny and God's call on his life. Now, that church has been so active. The reason she was qualified to meet with him is because of how active her church is. If I understood it correctly, they have 600 people volunteering for his campaign. And so that'll, that'll get you noticed. Wow. That'll get you noticed. And so she had the opportunity to meet with him and and I thank God for that not only it it blessed him and it blessed her and she's put a lot of hours into praying over this nation so I wanted to talk to you just briefly because I want I, I believe in having been centered up on the Word of God as we come together to pray and it strengthens us it encourages us and it gives us the focus and the means of which we pray now there's some things some things it's important what you pray. We know that. Surely we know that. And what we pray is so important. But not only what we pray, but the position from which we pray it. Now one of the first things that you start to learn as you come over, if you come out of a traditional, some traditional doctrines, you pray from a perspective of, oh God, Maybe he'll hear me. I'm not really sure, but we'll give this our best shot. Others might pray from a, a position of, I'm such a worm, I'm no good, but if you can just find it somehow, some way to hear this prayer and respond, we'd be ever so grateful. Um, then there are others that pray a little more confidently. We, we beseech you, oh great God, and there, there is... Maybe even an air of, of confidence in praying to him, but yet it's this God that's still so far off. Well, the initial thing that you find out is you come into circles of faith, and with faith because we believe something that we cannot, cannot see with our eyes apart from what we see in the Word, and that, that position that we have is that he has raised us up together with him, 
He has made us to sit down together with him, giving us joint seating with him in the heavenly sphere by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus. And so the perspective of our praying takes a whole different, we have a different viewpoint. The, that our place of prayer is first and foremost as a citizen of heaven, being seated with Christ. And the Bible tells us that, in fact, had just told us that he has put all things, God has put all things under his, Jesus' feet, and appointed him the universal and supreme head of the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all in all. For in that body lives the full measure of him, who makes everything complete, who fills everything everywhere with himself. And so our position in prayer is not one of a beggar, not one of a loser, but one of an overcomer, not because we have overcome anything within ourselves, but because he has overcome and we are seated with him. So our position of prayer is to be seated with him in heavenly places. And our view is from a victorious view already raised up. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't look like trouble from his vantage point. It, 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 it doesn't, he, he's already risen above it all. He's already made it to the top. He's already crossed over the finish line, won the medal, and you're the trophy. And so that's his vantage point. So we take that same vantage point. So our praying is not the prayers of someone. We're, we're, not, we're not begging. We're not supposing. We're not just hoping with a hope that uh, is based on the circumstances in the world that we see. But rather, we are praying from a position of the righteousness of God that's in Christ. And that righteousness is, we pray righteousness. We pray from a position of righteousness, which then gives God the freedom to make things right. But I want to take it just a little bit further now with two points. Now, we've been hearing throughout the convention, and this is one of the reasons why it's so important that you attend these meetings and conventions, is because everything we do from this point on is based on what we got out of that meeting. Now, if you, didn't, if you weren't there, then you should get the tapes, the CDs or something, and listen to Brother Copeland at least, so that you, we can move on together from there. But the focal point of the message during that convention, and the focus of everything he's teaching now, is based on the scripture in uh, Matthew 22:37 well 36 teacher what kind of commandment is great and important in the law uh, which are heavy and he said to him you shall love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind and this is the great, most important, and first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as you do yourself. These two commandments sum up and upon them depend all the law and the prophets. On these two commandments hang everything. And he said the first one is first because you can't love your neighbor if you don't love God. So we love the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. Deuteronomy says with all of our might, which is your strength, your influence, your finances. It's, it's, it's everything. It's your realm of influence and whatever you have to have influence. Wherever you can influence. We love God with that. You've loved the Lord tonight by being here. You love what he loves. You, you've expressed just by coming tonight an expression of love to the Father because you came. Because you, you see that he loves this nation. He loves all nations uh, because, because he loves the people. But there are, are nations that don't serve him. And the Bible says if, that he loves those that love him. What does he mean by that? There's a demonstration of his love towards those who love him that he cannot demonstrate towards those who do not. You know? So anyway, this, we love the Lord, so we're here, and we're here to serve him by praying for this nation. Now, that's one side of the coin. We love this nation from the vantage point of this is the cradle of the gospel for the world. 
This nation was established in order that the gospel would be preached. It is the commission. It is the God-given commission of this nation to preach the gospel. Other nations have had that opportunity and passed it up. But this nation obeyed God and was established on the principle of the gospel. And from that, from that foundation has come, the, has come liberty, has come uh, the political framework of a republic with, the Democrat, with democratic rule. And so we, we look at this nation separate from the nation. We look at it, you're here tonight as, with, as Christians. We're here, we separate, we pull back from political alliance in the sense of um, we are first of all believers. We are first of all children of God. We are first of all citizens of a heavenly kingdom. And the Bible calls us ambassadors for the anointing. So our commitment is to that first. Now, as we are committed to that, that commitment to righteousness, the Bible says in Deuteronomy, it says, I set before you uh, blessing and cursing, life and death. Therefore, choose life so that you and your seed may live. So everything that we do, we must follow in line with that commandment to choose life. Well, it's gotten to such a place in these days that there's no gray area here. It used to. You, there, there were godly Christian principles that rose up from uh, both major political parties. And it was a balance of the two. And some spoke out strongly for some things. And others stroke out, spoke out strongly for other things. And, and the, the two working together moved us towards the things of God. It's not like that anymore. I am sorry to say. But we have an entire uh, political party embracing genocide and embracing government control, embracing the, the all, all uh, against the Ten Commandments, not only in what they stand for, but even allowing them to be seen by our children. So you, you can see that, that that's a problem. So with righteousness then causes us to have to stand behind the group. Now, none of them were perfect. And don't get me wrong. I mean, you got, you got ungodliness in all camps. But you have one group that has banded together. And the Bible tells us that in the end times, that's exactly what will happen. That the wicked men will be bound together. The, Jesus said that the angels would gather them together in bundles and that they would be burned. Now, you just take a look what's happening. We've got the homosexual bundle, the pornography bundle, uh, uh, the, um, the anti-God bundle, the abortion bundle. All of these things, they're grouping together. And for the first time more than ever, all those groups are grouping together. So we don't have a choice but to, as the righteousness of God, to stand behind a policy and a platform that says no to all those things. In fact, we want to stand behind that and believe God for it to be stronger. You know, it's too weak in some areas. So we don't just, we're not just going to put on that hat and, and say praise the Lord and just go along. No, there are changes and things that need to happen. But it's, it's these, there is a group that is yielding to that, willing to hear that, willing to listen where the majority of the people in another group are not. Now, I didn't, I, I not, I didn't, I'm not making those statements. You, all you have to do is just get a copy of the platform. Just listen a little bit and you find out where they stand and what they believe. And as believers, our first obligation is to the kingdom of God and our citizenship, which is in heaven, not to the economy of our pocketbook or or this that we like or that that we don't, and this particular thing that favors me or not, or my group or not, we have to stand. And really, the first and foremost choice is regarding the abortion issue. Everything else, you know, is almost inconsequential because the Bible says, choose life so that you and your seed may live. Right. Now, if we don't do that, then we stand accountable for it. And we'll stand accountable for this vote 
We're going to stand accountable for our own vote in light of that, if nothing else. So we have that. We have that to look for. We have to also look at where our nation stands, where Israel is concerned. Now, where does, how does this all tie in this with love? Well, we love what God loves. we first of all, citizens of the kingdom. And so when we pray, we pray with the authority and in the same authority that God gave Jesus because Jesus has given us his name. But we have to pray in line with his will. So we pray the word. Pray by the leading of the Spirit. But now the other side of that, what about this as we are also, by natural birth, citizens of the United States? Most of us here anyway. Citizens of the United States. And so from that position, from a natural position, we pray still, still in union with Jesus, but we pray in union with what he did. He left heaven and identified with sinners. And he became as we were and yet without sin. So our praying, and we just let the Holy Spirit show us and lead us, it's always based on love. We love what God loves, so we're looking down on this situation and we pray with authority. We pray as ambassadors of heaven. We pray, we pray in that spirit realm and we do spiritual business, dealing with angels and dealing with devils. We deal with whatever the Holy Spirit lays out for us to lead, now, uh, to, uh, to pray. Now, what I'm doing tonight, we're laying this as a foundation for our prayer times between now and the election. And then on, uh, over our nation as the Lord leads. So we're praying with that authority. But then on the other side of this, we come at it as a citizen of the United States. But as a godly citizen, and we look to the throne, and we identify with these people around us. In other words, we feel what they feel. And we, but we let the Lord do that. You, you let the Lord reveal what's in people. You can't judge that based on what you see. You, I mean, it's impossible. It's impossible to judge anything or anybody just based on the things that you see. Now, you can judge by their fruit. Don't get me wrong about that. But you can't judge the heart of a man. When you, when you judge the fruit of someone, you judge your in, interaction and involvement with them. If someone's got a certain fruit in their life and you can see that, then you know whether to associate or not. That's where your judgment is. But you can't judge the heart of a person. You don't know what's going on. You don't know what's happened to them. You can't be critical of them. You can't be judgmental of them. You just judge the fruit. Good fruit, bad fruit. But you don't judge the heart of another person. But as when the Lord opens your eyes... When the Lord puts you in position to identify with a group of people, something different happens. You, you take hold somehow with them in a way, and you then begin to lift them because you can. Jesus was able to lift us because he was righteous. We weren't. So he took hold with us, with his righteousness, and lifted us. Now we know that the scripture tells us that in Proverbs 13, that righteousness exalts a nation. Now, we always think about that in terms of if a, na if a nation will behave righteously, well, it will promote the nation. Well, that's true. But you are the righteousness of God. And so our, our righteousness, we take hold of this nation and in the spirit of love. Because we love, we're not, we love the people that hate God. See, we have to love them in order to lift them. One of the best ways for righteousness to prevail is to, to get more wicked people in, to be righteous, don't you think? So we don't want to, we're not out to just, we're going to beat them. and we're, we're, You know, we're, we're not in a political fight. We're going to fight the devil in prayer, but we're in here to help people. I want those people that are angry. Those, there are people that are mad really mad at George Bush because he's not for abortion. There are people that, are, that hate him because he stands for, for uh, same sex, not, does not stand for same-sex marriage, but that marriage is between a man and a woman. Well, that's what God stands for. So you can see that what they hate what he stands for, they hate what God stands for. But we don't hate them. 
We're not against them. We want righteousness. We want, we want to take hold of them as the Lord leads us and lift them so their eyes can see, so their eyes can be opened. Hallelujah. And so they can be saved. Praise the Lord. So uh, that's, that is the foundation for our praying as we pray over our nation over these next several weeks and, and months is that, that we first of all want to be yielded to the Lord in a spirit of love. Um, surely there is righteous indignation that rises, but you have to be sure where that falls. And then it doesn't fall against people. But we're, we, we are angry. We're, we're angry at wickedness. And we're, we're, there are wicked people. There are wicked people whose hearts have solemnly sworn against God. Now I want to show you something. One thing about that, if I can remember where that verse is in Proverbs. I believe I can recall where it is. Okay. In Proverbs 28, 17, if a man willfully sheds the blood of a person and keeps the guilt of murder upon his conscience, he is fleeing to the pit, the grave, and hastening to to his own destruction. Let no man stop him. When you have someone that that hatred, the Bible tells us that hatred and the spirit of murder go hand in hand. And you have someone that's developed in that and they, keep, they hold it there. They don't want to let go. They hold that spirit. They hold that spirit of murder. It says, and they keep it on their conscience. Keep it on their mind. They commune with it. It says that they are fleeing to the, to the pit. They're on their way to hell. And they are hastening their own destruction. They're speeding it up. And then he says, don't anybody stop it. Lord, that's a hard word. That's a hard word. The Lord said, don't stop it. So, there are people that are going to experience, well, in verse 5 of this same chapter, evil men do not understand justice, but they who crave and seek the Lord understand it fully. So there are people that, that if, you, if, you, if you don't have the fear of the Lord, you don't really understand justice. So, all that just to say that there are people, there are, there are things that will happen. Uh, and people die. Judgment comes. But our responsibility is to pray in a spirit of love with authority on behalf of people. So as many people as we can get out of that. You know, the, the, get, get them out out of that being captured by people that way. A lot of people are following. There are men that are like this, but then there are lots of people following people like this. They, they're deceived. This person right here, this is not a deceived person. This is somebody who's made a choice and understands what they're doing. But we want to take hold of people that are deceived. That are, that are, that are in great Jeopardy, great risk. And we want to help pull them out of this draw over into the kingdom. What kind of kingdom is it? There's the kingdom of darkness and then the kingdom of? Well, but you know what? The Bible calls it the kingdom of the son of his love. The kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of the son of his love. Hallelujah. That's where we want to draw people. Bless the Lord. Amen. So that's how we're going to pray. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and stand and just spend some time. See how, how we go. You st I'll go up here where you can take this with me.
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want us to start by just praising the Lord. And, and I want you to find, I don't want you to just say words. I want you to on purpose. This is by faith. What we're doing here is by faith. And we're going to look for that place in our, in our inside of love for this nation. I just, you know, the Holy Spirit will help you. It doesn't take very much to just look inside and see the love, the great love with which He loves this nation and why He loves this nation and the people in it. My, my, my. And we just want to thank Him for that. We thank Him for it. Just pray in the Spirit. Just, just dwell on that. Meditate on that. And as we pray, we want to pray from that particular, that place in your inner man. That place of great love over this nation. Hallelujah. We're so grateful to you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my Jesus. Oh, my Jesus, you looked at Jerusalem and you wept. You looked at Jerusalem and you wept. You saw that city. You saw that city. You saw where she was hurting. You saw that she was like, a, like sheep without a shepherd. And it grieved your heart. And Lord... Our nation, so many of our people... Lord, they have acted like sheep without a shepherd. But Lord, we're asking for a shepherd. We're asking for a shepherd that the nation will look to. Oh, Jesus, you're our shepherd. You're the shepherd of the, of the church. You're the shepherd of the flock. You're our shepherd, Lord. But Jesus, you put shepherds over people. You've given us pastors to lead us in the church. But Lord, we're asking now for a shepherd to watch over the sheep of this nation. This nation, which is your darling. This nation, Lord, that you love. Lord, there have even been men and women who have given their lives for the freedom in this nation. That Lord, that didn't even know you, but they would die for you. They died for, for, for what this nation stood for, not even knowing that it stood for you. And Lord, those people need a shepherd. They need someone that will lead them. And God, I know that if it's your man, he'll lead them to you. Hallelujah. And so we pray, Lord, we pray over that shepherd. And you said, Lord, in Psalm 80 that you put the shepherd over the sheep. And when you said that, Lord, you spoke of the nation. You were speaking of Israel as a nation when you said you would give them a shepherd. You said that Jesus was a government leader, that the government would be on His shoulders. And so, Lord, we know that there are political shepherds to be placed in the nation. And we're praying over the shepherds in this nation. We pray over the political shepherds in this nation. We're praying over the lead shepherd of this nation. And we thank You, Father, that that lead shepherd is a shepherd under Your shepherdship. Oh, give Him the counsel. Give him the might. Give him the discernment. Give him the discretion. Give him the unction to speak. You said, Lord, that the sheep would know the shepherd's voice. I pray over his voice tonight. I pray that he would have the voice of the shepherd. And that the sheep would be alert to hear his voice. That their ear would be tuned. That they would hear the voice of the shepherd. Lord, we know with any shepherd that you put in place that you, that your voice is heard through that shepherd's voice. Hallelujah. 
So we pray, Lord, for the sheep to hear the shepherd that you put in place. That the sheep will hear the shepherd's voice. Hallelujah. The sheep will hear the shepherd's voice. Hallelujah. And the anointing of the shepherd would be on him. The anointing to protect. The anointing to defend. The anointing to lead. The anointing to feed. Hallelujah. The anointing to nurture. The anointing to raise up. The anointing of the shepherd to come on him in Jesus. The mantle of the shepherd in the name of Jesus. The anointing of the shepherd in the name of Jesus. The shepherd's voice, the shepherd's voice, the shepherd's voice. Our shepherd, Oloborosa Lamashta. Our shepherd, Elelamadrosta Karenimisatai. The sent ones, Alabrando Shalabarati. The sent ones, Alabrato Kobasta Kabasta Basti. Hallelujah. Sobro de dich de Kilibadarasta. Hallelujah. Pro de rini shele marando de kialama e avarano non esti kialala varun de astia ke. Glory to him. Rashto kere de diasta. Elamaga brosta. The shepherd's voice. The shepherd's voice. Alobo renishte kere nishtanda. Speak through your servants, Lord. Speak through your servants. Speak through your servants. Speak through your servants, the shepherds. Aglebra nanamashta. Are de di shalabrando do shelela mashta kajete ti ashtata. Ya ure de ni shelala marando shte ya panda dashta yata. Hallelujah. Other than Jesus, David is our greatest example of political leadership. Other than Jesus. He's, he's the one that we saw God put into office. He established his throne. And we saw that then with Solomon. But what was David first? He was a shepherd. Hallelujah. A shepherd. A leader with the people at heart. A leader whose greatest concern is for the care of the sheep. Thank you, Jesus. So nrashta kelele matashti. Ajele la barado de sialama. Ele kimana shelele mi aha lele batasta. Ronde selele ado rota si zasa. Do sheala la barado do si kiama. E neni shele ado roba daja la barasha la la mandata. Oh, the care of the sheep, the care of the sheep, the care of the sheep. We thank you, Jesus, that you are the good shepherd and you watch over the sheep. You watch over the sheep. We thank you, Father, for this election. Because on behalf of the sheep, Lord, on behalf of the sheep, it must go your way. On behalf of the sheep, all the elections, top to bottom, Lord, they need to go your way, your people, your assigned shepherds, local shepherds, uh, uh, county shepherds, 
state shepherds, hallelujah, federal shepherds, glory to God, presidential shepherd, military shepherds, Judges, abrandoste kichatara. Court shepherds, aglebashta. Court shepherds, ablobra doste kibrandarasta. Nandereste lebere kisoda. Ede di shalama dashe de ti. Amada jo de di alabo de alamba ale ashto kambrajati. O lambranda celebre ni ki adose e la badando celebre di di azote di di ashto kombo matala marano le majata. Yeso crebe di di ashto clemera da sta kerin in amazati. Andado de di di shederin amasha. Now we take hold together in the name of Jesus for our president now. We pray over his protection. We pray over that convention. I plead the blood of Jesus from the top to the bottom and all the way around. It's the covenant blood, the covenant blood, the covenant of protection in the name of Jesus. The ark, the ark, the ark of the covenant. Glory, 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 glory. Oh, the wisdom of God, the counsel of God, the wisdom of God, the counsel of God, the counsel of God, the counsel of God. We pray for the counsel of God to rise. Abrandoshta tadai. Counsel of the Spirit. Abrandoshta ta. Holy Ghost people praying. Alamashta. Tongues and interpretation. Abrandoshta ka. Holy Ghost people praying. Holy Ghost people praying. Holy Ghost people praying. Abrandoshta kredenishta ta. Abrandoshta. Abrandoshto lembreta si. Father, I pray that the saints find one another in that convention. I pray that they see one another. They know one another. They bind together in the spirit of unity and faith and love. We take hold. Alamas dombra andiridishte ke alama obre nene sele badabro ejde ekera namas tole mahare no mosta ele marandoshte ki marandoshte kamarashta yadan. Do you know what our president said last week was his greatest disappointment of his term has been? His greatest disappointment was that he was not able to change the harsh atmosphere in Washington. His greatest disappointment that he was not able to turn Washington from a city of hatred into a city of cooperation. So as we pray now, we're going to pray in this. So that is an invitation for us to pray. I mean, I love that. Here's someone whose greatest disappointment is that he was not able to make, to, 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 for, the, for love to change things. Well, I believe that he'll have opportunity to, to keep working it. Keep working it. Keep working it. And we're going to help him more than we've ever helped him. Oh, hallelujah. We're believing. I believe for there to be such a demonstration of the love of God in this convention. Such a spirit of faith and love. Hallelujah. Anything outside of love will automatically seem out of place. Father, that the believers would walk in love. They love one another. Love the president. Love the enemies. Love, love the nation. Love, the, love God. Love the church. Love, love the Ten Commandments. Love the Bible. Oh, we're just walking in love with you, Lord. We're walking in love with you. I pray, Father, for a people who are not afraid to say, Yes, we love God. Yes, we are one nation under God. Yes, we are a people of God. We choose to walk His way. We choose His commandments. We choose Him. I pray, Father, for a people who are not afraid. I pray for a president. I pray for a congressman. I pray for delegates. I pray, Lord, for courage and boldness.
boldness to speak forth boldly as they ought to speak. Now, remember this. I'm reminded of the book of Esther. And that was one of the greatest political turnarounds in history. Huge political turnaround. Where there were people who were set out to destroy the people of God and wipe them out and were at the 11th hour getting it done. And there was a turn that through prayer, through fasting and prayer, that whole situation was turned and everyone that was on the bottom was put on top and everyone that was on the top was hanged. But let me point this out to you. Did you know the name of God is not mentioned one time in the book of Esther? The name of the Lord is not mentioned once in the entire book. Hallelujah. What does that say to us? Well, his presence is there. And he's this obviously is, as they go to prayer. And so God, God works in ways. He can do things. He can get in places. See, he, he knows how to do what he needs to do. So don't be disturbed and don't be fluttered. We're, we listen between the lines. We're listening. We're li we know what we're listening for. We're the sheep. We know the shepherd's voice. And we hear the shepherd's voice when one of his shepherds speaks. We know. We know when we hear the Holy Ghost. We know when we hear. We know when we hear. You'll, if you listen, you'll hear prophecy. You'll hear prophecy. That doesn't happen to be in the church. Prophecy is just a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Father, we pray for the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. We have high expectation, Lord. We expect to hear you and see you and to watch you move among people in this convention and to springboard from this convention into all of our nation, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You said you had taken hold of the politics of this nation. You said you took control of it. We pray, Lord, that you have your way. And we, we are your sheep and we will hear your voice. We'll see you, we'll know you, and we'll rejoice. Hallelujah, we'll rejoice. We expect to hear the voice of love. Oh, Father, we have faith for it. We believe 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 it. Oh, brashta le maradoz te le barasha gere na mahale baradas toshta la maradashta. Embrendo te se le marado egle maranado brashta la la mashta. Oranda se le le brando se le le ma avre re na mahalombra. In the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Father, that eyes would be opened. That eyes would be opened. Oh, the voice of the Good Shepherd. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I don't know about you, but it just seems to me that that's just dropped in my heart. Do you sense that? Is it just me? Do you just sense a love? I just have a this. I sense. Just feel the love. I sense the love. I sense the love of God having freedom. Oh, that's what we want. Mm, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Now we're going to hold that and maintain that spirit of love and faith over this convention and over... And, you know, once this convention is over, then, then the political process is in full swing. Then it... Then it I mean, it's, it's in a race. Then it's a race. And so we want to, from this point, we want to hold that place of love. Hold that place of faith. From, from through this convention right on into the race over everyone. And we want to believe the love of God over, over those that don't believe as we know to believe. Not just that don't believe different. Folks, it's not a matter of just opinion here. We're talking life and death. So when you hear things that you know are wrong and you hear things that just go so against the Spirit of God, Oh, just let love go to them. Just pity them. Just pity them and just love them and just say, Oh, God, we just love them. Forgive them, Jesus. Forgive them, Jesus. Forgive them. 
forgive them, show them, Jesus, show them, Lord, they just don't know your love. Oh, the goodness of God. Now, Lord, I just in a brief moment, I lift up to you. I, I, I told, told them that we would do this. I lift up to you those that are on the front lines, Lord. I lift up to you that, that are frontline preachers and don't even know it. Radio talk shows and news programs that Father, with all their heart and being, doing what they see to do. And Father, so many of them, I know they're, they're, they're believers. And they're, they're doing, they're laying it all on the line, Lord, day after day. And there are so many people that hate them because of what they stand for. So Lord, we pray for them. We plead the blood over them. We plead the blood over their lives and over their families, their children. Lord, their careers. And I pray, Lord, that each and every one of them would answer your call and know it's you and walk with you. That every one of them would know you deeper and that they'll have a walk with you. I'm asking for labors of the field. Father, if they aren't born again, that they would come to know the saving love of Jesus, the salvation love of Jesus. If they have... If they have if they recognize the Lordship of Jesus, I pray, Father, that they would have a deeper communion with the Holy Spirit. That they would draw near to you and you would draw near to them. And that they would be empowered by their union with Jesus and a greater and deeper walk with you. Empowered by the Holy Spirit Himself. Hallelujah. Anointed with grace. I bind that spirit of pride that would rise up. I bind that in Jesus' name and command you to loose them and let them go. Thank you, Jesus. Help them, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to pray more tomorrow night. I want you to come. Please come back. It helps so much when the same people come back and, and bring somebody with you. We're going to take hold of some things and we're going to come up in prayer as we gather. All right. Now, those of you that have prayed for a long time, you prayed in prayer school, you prayed with me, or, or real quick, I want I want uh, my M M Lane and Pastor George and Mary Lou, Iva, you guys come up here real quick. Just stand up here real fast. I want you to see that this this is your 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 main prayer. Um, it's really it's like this. <laughs> All through this time that we're praying in prayer school, everything that we're doing about this election, these are the leaders for the most, unless the Lord leads us otherwise. So anytime you can pray with one of these folks, you should. Now we have lots of other prayer leaders and you should get in their prayer groups. But as in terms of prayer leadership in the church, these are, this is your, your first, first line right here. And so if for some reason I'm not here, one of them will be, and it, it will be, the Lord recognizes it just as much as he would if Pastor or I were here. So stay with us on this, please. Uh, this is so important, and it's important to our church and how the Lord blesses us. I want to reap the benefit of God's people being put in office. I want to reap the full benefit of that, and I want us to be able to do that because we sowed the seed of faith towards it. Amen? Bless the Lord. So this is Iva, this is Mary Lou, and this is Melaine, in case you didn't know. And so if you get an opportunity to pray with any of them or all of them, oh, don't miss it. Amen. I have a scripture. Oh, Mary Lou has a scripture. This is a scripture we can believe. When you brought that up about what the president had been believing for. This is a scripture that I, I was quickened quicken to me that we can agree with him on. Psalm 37, 4. He delights himself in the Lord, and the Lord will give him the desires of his heart. Psalm 37 is a great psalm with all that's going on right now anyway, but that one, we can agree on that scripture that God will give him the desires of his heart. That's right. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. I wanted to address our e-membership, those that are watching on BVOV. I'm not sure which, sure which camera I've got because I don't see a light up there. So, Oh, there you are. Um, I, I think this is really... Uh, crucial and significant that our internet is with us. Uh, you know, I've often said before in church that whenever we're not on live, it seems like there's something missing. 
And I know that there are people watching tonight. You heard about putting this on the internet tonight, and you're with us tonight, and we can sense your presence with us. We'll be back tomorrow night. And you join us. You be here with us to pray with us because we sense the connection that we have with you wherever you are, whatever nation that you are watching us from. We're believing with you that Jesus is Lord over your nation, just as Jesus is Lord over the United States of America. In the same way that Jesus is Lord over the United States of America, we agree that Jesus is Lord over your nation, your state, your city, wherever you are watching us from right now. We are in agreement together that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord over Washington. Washington is a city of God. It belongs to God. It was there for God. It's there for His purpose now. And it is His and it will stay His. It will stay His. We've gained ground and we're not letting go. We've taken the high ground and we're not letting go. I watched a special on PBS and it wasn't even a it wasn't even a a, a, a a Christian special, but it was talking about the faith of George Bush. And they showed a a shot from the pulpit where the preacher was preaching when he preached that word that set a fire in George Bush to run for president. And it just, it really took, it just shook me when I saw it. I saw, they had a camera at the pulpit looking down at the seat where he was sitting in that church. And how God connected him to do this. I believe that, that God is going to continue to have his way in this nation. And we're not going backwards, but we're moving forward. We're going forward. You're going to see some changes in the abortion realm. There are some changes that are taking place in the realm of abortion. And there, there are people rising up, anointed people of God, who know how, how to articulate. Now, we stand in agreement right now with George Bush for the ability and the anointing to articulate when he speaks. That he will speak under a new anointing from heaven. It will go beyond coaches. It will go beyond advisors. It will go into the realm of the anointing that will remove the burdens and it will destroy the yokes. He will preach this week under a new anointing. That's why he has struggled in his speaking. Because the Lord is wanting him to preach his messages. And that's where the struggle has been. And so we need to help him. Just in the same way that you help me preach a sermon on Sunday and it just sometimes it's just the easiest thing for words to come out it's like right now I need to be quiet and let you go home but it's just so easy because y'all are pulling well we need to pull on him the night that he speaks we need to pull on him just like you'd pull and draw on the anointing of a preacher and so you pull on that anointing in him glory to God Amen. We'll see you tomorrow night. God bless you guys.